Greetings RC friends, welcome to Props and Wheels. Here we are in the second episode of the review of MD Hobby E0717 4 channel airplane. This airplane I got from banggood.com for $60 and it came with everything to bring it up to PNP or plug and play configuration. And they claim it's a trainer airplane. So if that's true, if it is a good trainer, you can get, theoretically, you can get it up and flying for less than $100. Everything you need, including a simple radio system and the battery, minus the battery charger. If that's the case, this will be groundbreaking. For less than $100, you can get into the hobby. But that needs to be tested during the maiden flight, if this is good for trainers, it's a good plan at all. In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate how to build it and get it ready to fly. And I'm going to go step by step following these 40 steps presented on these nicely printed all color building instructions. It is very detailed, it, there shouldn't be any issues. And in terms of the receiver, I'm going to use this Asun X8R6 2.4 GHz receiver. Uh, I got a bunch of these donated to, our, to my channel by my dear friend Scott, aka Maverick. He was switching to another radio system, so he was just giving away these things, and I said I could use it. And I already used uh, three of these on other planes and they work very well. There's two antenna, long antenna, so I usually place them in so that they are facing a different direction, just to give some diversity. And I'm planning to bind this plane to my Radio Master TX16S. It's an open TX uh, transmitter. During the build, I'm planning to use my Gorilla glue gun and sticks. I had very good experience with these. They are great and this gun has two settings, low and high. If you set it to high, they claim it has better adhesion qualities. But again, the wings on this one is a styrofoam, so I have to be careful not to melt it. Styrofoam has a low melting point. So I may be using both low and high settings. Unless I have to use another type of glue like epoxy to make structures a little stronger. We will see about that, but I'll point out anything that is different than what is in the instructions or what, it, what I'm planning to use. Also, I'm going to go into time lapse during the builds and then only come back to real time if I have something important to say or to point out what I'm working on at that time. So let's get started. I'm going to, again, as I said, follow the instructions and then start from step number one. The first four steps is for getting the landing gear ready. I should point out that the optional wheel pants did not come in my kit, so I don't have the wheel pants. So we are skipping this, uh, this step. For these steps, you are going to need the two larger wheels and the main landing gear, the smaller wheel and then the tail landing gear. And also you're going to need three colors, these three colors with set screws, two large for the main landing gear and one small for the tail landing gear. These set screws, you're going to need a 1.5 millimeter hex or allen key for these set screws. Doesn't come with the kit. And also I'm going to use this uh, blue treadlock compound so that the set screws are not going to get loose and fall off. Also you're going to need this plastic piece which is landing gear fixing plate. In the steps 5 through 13, we'll be installing the horizontal and vertical stabilizers, the rear landing gear, the tail gear, as well as the control horns for the elevator and rudder. And for this, you are going to need the fuselage, the horizontal stabilizer, vertical stabilizer. These plates, plus the tail gear, this little plate that will basically hold this... Uh, tail gear attached to the rudder, so when, when the rudder turns, this will be turning as well. Two control horns with the fixing plates, as well as some screws. I'm not sure which ones, but I'm guessing that we are going to need a couple of these and these, because there are so many different ones, like really tiny ones, middle size ones, large ones, and then there are four of these screws that look like wood screws, and 
there are four of them with flat heads and I'm assuming these are going to fix this uh, larger servo plate or electronics plate into the fuselage because we need four of those and I don't know what these tiny ones are as well as this uh, like almost small bolt is for and in terms of tools you're going to need a Phillips screwdriver and also you are going to need probably something sharp to make like the guiding holes on the fuselage for the screws to screw in I'm going to use this uh, little drill set the smallest one but what you can do is you can probably have a wire a thin wire and then you can heat it up and then make holes in the plastic on the back so the way it's going to be assembled is let me show you very quickly so this is the holder for the horizontal stabilizer and this will go in first so do you see there is a rectangular structure that's jutting out and it's going to go in here and there is a right way which is the larger opening here is going to face forward and then this is the tail section so it will go in like this and then these larger screws you know three of them are going to go in I'm assuming these are the correct sizes because when I push one in it was a perfect fit as you can see and it's almost like flush here because the horizontal stabilizer will be coming on top and then when that goes in next is so this spar section is looking down not up this is going to come in like this and then this is the holder this little piece with the hole is for the tail wheel it's a guide hole for the tail gear like it's going to go through that so this will go in like this and then there are two screws these screws are going to be these smaller or mini medium sized screws and when I tested it they they match the hole pretty good and then they have enough length to hold it as you can see over here and then once that's done once this is done of course it's going to be on top of the fuselage then this rudder is going to come in with the glue and then you can see the holes for the control horns so make sure that you are putting them on the you know correct side you now this will be for the elevator coming from you know make sure that it's bottom or top I will show you during the assembly and then finally on the bottom part you're going to make some holes in this plastic that we can probably see over here there are the locations are kind of marked with, in round so you just have to make like your guiding holes and this I'm assuming is going to be also using these medium sized screws so this, this fits kind of well into this hole if you push push it and then the length is pretty pretty good so it will be going like this and during the assembly make sure that this wire is passing through this section on the back and then once it passes you are going to use this fixing plate do you see this is the hole there's a channel to hold this wire in place I'm dropping everything there's a channel that this landing gear wire is going to go and then it's going to be connected here sorry over here this part so it's this section will be kind of like this this is going like this So when the rudder turns, this gear will be turning as well. It will be connected.
just a quick comment in order to be able to fit the hinge point of that hinge axis of the tail wheel in the right spot right here where it's also the elevator hinge I'm sorry the rudder hinges I had to cut small sections as you can see here so I cut this section and this section so that I can move the rudder the whole vertical stabilizer a little forward as you can see there are areas in here that you know these slot need to fit and it was those slots were pushing it too far backwards so I pulled it a little forward by cutting those slots so the hinging location is overlapping with the rudder and the tail wheel so it doesn't it's not sticking out too much so now it's fine I'm going to continue at this point the next three steps 14 through 16 are how to get this servo slash receiver slash battery tray into the fuselage and fix it. So the step 14 says that we need to attach and glue these four tabs, wooden tabs, but they have been already glued. They came ready like this, so I don't have to do that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to strengthen them with a little bit of more hot glue on the back. And to get it inside, it's a little tricky because you have to push, push it that way. And then the, the front section is a little tight. So what you have to do is put your, basically put your um, fingers through the bottom opening and help it that way. It will help if you get one side in. So there are three slots if you can see them over here. The first one, the middle one, and then front one. So once you get them into these slots, those tabs into the slots on, on, the, on one side, in this case on the right side. I'm kind of opening up the front section of the plane and then pushing everything in and then now they are seated. All the tabs are seated in their associated locations as you can see from the, and if I hold it towards the, towards the light, you can see the tray is now sitting here with the tabs. And we are going to need six screws these are kind of long and thin and the whole sizes on this plate kind of match those let me show you very quickly as you can see if you use anything wider than these may split these holes because these holes are very small and also once I get the tray in I'm going to put some extra glue hot glue inside so that's not just those uh, six screw holding it but the glue it will be the reinforcement The next four steps are for connecting the control rods to the elevator and rudder control horns. For this step, we are going to need these connectors. And for each connect, we are going to need the, these small screws that came with them. So they were all provided in the same bag, so you cannot miss them. And plus these tiny little safety clips, wire safety clips. And I don't know how I should feel about this method. I have never used it before. The way you do it is I suppose this is the elevator horn. You know, do you see that there is a little tab with a hole over here? So this little tab goes in here in one of the holes. And then you take this little safety clip and push push it through that hole. So it doesn't pop out. You see, so just push it in, it stays there. 
So it is easy to disconnect it, but it's not going to come off during flight. It's a very nice, interesting system. However, I'm not sure how strong these little tabs are. You know, to be seen. But I like this method. This is uh, makes everything very easy. I'm going to put it back and so the way of attaching these wires are so they go through this plastic piece and you can adjust the length of it as you can see here and then use this screw to screw it in and then hold it in place so this makes it also very easy to adjust physically adjust the trim by just loosening this little screw and then moving the control rod and then fastening back on. One quick comment I would like to make at this point is that I'm surprised that they did not provide these plastic tubes to guide these control rods because let me show you the, the rudder. Rudder is especially stiff because it also has the tail wheel and it is also connected at an angle. So when I'm pulling, it's okay, it pulls fine. But when I'm pushing, at one point the, the wire starts bending. So it doesn't push more than a certain degree of a left turn basically or left yaw. So pulling is okay, but pushing, it's having some issues. And with the elevator, it's the same. Do you see this like flexing over here? Let me show from inside. So if you are trying to push down hard, this is bending. It would have been much better if they provided this uh, plastic tubing that they can at least like you can run a certain length inside the fuselage so that the control rod doesn't bend like that. So is it going to create a control issue? I'm not sure, we are going to see. Maybe the deflections are not going to be that much. It may be fine, but uh, this may be a problem, just pointing that out. If you want to modify it and you have those uh, proper size tubing, you should probably add it. I'm going to build it as is in order to give it a fair review true to its original packaging. In terms of steps, we are halfway done. The next five steps are first installing the dowels that are going to be used to attach the wing. I'm going to use hot glue to fix them in place. And then installing the motor base and the motor mount and then motor itself and finally the motor cowling. So here are all the parts, the motor itself, this is the base for the motor, it's going to come like that, the hole has already been made, so the wires, three wires coming from the motor are going to go through that. Again I'm going to use uh, hot glue for that. And then motor mount comes on, on top, here are the three, uh, four screws for that. And then finally, the cowling goes on top. And I'm assuming that once I push it all the way in, I'm going to use these tiny little, uh, four tiny little screws that they provided. I'm, I'm guessing these must be the ones to be used here. I put little dabs of hot glue around the motor mounting screws so that they didn't come loose due to vibration during flight.
There is a little bit of extra material here in the motor cowling that I'm going to remove by cutting it out so that the motor does not rub to it. The engine cowling was a little too small. As you can see, there's a gap, although the motor is almost flush with it. And hence that I didn't want to use these little screws. Instead, I use just tape, clear tape, and that way I can just remove it easily. As you see, it didn't quite fit in. They should have made it longer, and it was also very tight, you know. I couldn't press it all the way in anyway. Sorry, I take that back. Don't put on the motor cowling yet because you need to connect the ESC electronic speed control to the wires of the motor and you won't be able to do it here because there's not enough room to reach in. So what you have to do is push these wires from inside, outside and then do it outside here and then push them back in. And also here, I think after this step, mounting the motor cover, a couple steps are missing because after this you have to install the ESC and I recommend also installing the, your receiver and connecting to your transmitter because the next step is going to be installing the elevator and or rather servos and you want to center them first you know in order to be able to center them you can you have to connect it to your receiver and another reason for not installing the engine cowling yet is because if the motor is rotating the wrong direction you will have to pull out these wires and swap two connectors so it's rotating in the right direction. You cannot believe what a major pain in the neck passing these wires was through that little hole. I had to enlarge in the hole because these didn't fit and there is very little room to put your hand through. So my recommendation before putting on anything, pass those through. Even before putting the engine mount, pass those through. Um, and then just you'll be fine with it. Just you know, pass, pass them through and maybe put it with the tape. So do it beforehand, otherwise going to be very frustrating. I installed my Asan X8R66 channel receiver and everything's connected and I bound it to my Radio Master TX16S, set up the model, all is fine and if you are wondering how to bind the Asan receiver to TX16S, I'll put the link in down in the description. Anyway, the motor was rotating uh, backwards, so I swapped two of the wires, now it's all good. Next, I'm going to install the uh, brother and elevator servos as uh, in here. But before I start connecting them, I'm going to make sure that they are centered and the control servo arms are not touching each other.
The rudder and elevator servers are installed, connected and adjusted. So just to let you know, I'm using the second hole from the, from the center on each servo arm. And I cut the, the tip so that they didn't touch each other. So if you look, I'm just going to give some elevator inputs. You can see it's elevator moving and then rudder inputs. And that's plenty of movement. I'm going to give full elevator up. This is 100% and it's almost touching so you cannot use anything in it. By the way, as I mentioned earlier, these don't have any guides. And when I am actually pushing down elevator like this, do you see it's going to, it's, it's bending. So if you are worried about this, I'm not too worried because usually uh, if it is not uh, aerobatic airplane, you are not really pushing down hard. It's mostly, you know, we are pulling it up and the pulling is fine. And then the same thing is happening on the rudder. So one side turn is going to, so you see this is just bending both here and so this is really floppy and sloppy at the same time. So if you want to fix it, I'm not going to fix it because I just want to give a review as it is out of the box without any enhancements. So and see how it flies. And uh, you know, rudder is not as important as the ailerons in terms of turning, unless you are doing some aerobatics and coordinated turns. So, and also this, uh, you know, vertical stabilizer is a little, a little flimsy kind of bending right and left a little bit and kind of torquing but it should be uh, enough enough deflection on both sides next is the landing gear so I'm just going to quickly install the landing gear it requires this uh, landing gear plates over here and five screws and then landing gear main landing gear itself and after that, it's going to be time for installing the, preparing and installing the wings and everything. So that's going to take quite a while, probably. Somehow I'm short one screw, but I found a very similarly sized one in my toolbox, so we are all good. So here is the close-up of the landing gear installation, the main landing gear. So five screws and that holder plate and then this thinner section, narrower section faces forward and then the wider section faces back and the plastic dimple, guiding dimple, goes through this center hole. And then there is another dimple. Yeah, you are not going to use that one. It's on the back. Now it's starting to look like an airplane. With the wings, the first step is cutting off this protective strip around them. Let me show you what that is. It's probably from the molding process. This thin strip doesn't have any, any structural function, so... And uh, it's already coming off in certain locations like that. You can probably peel it off, but it won't be nice and smooth. So I'm going to use my retractable blade all around. And then we have to release the ailerons. So ailerons also have these sections, so I'm just going to cut here and here on both and then of course you are going to leave this it's going to be a foam hinge but I don't I don't trust a styrofoam serving as a foam hinge so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a strip of this 3m blender that's going to serve as a tape hinge I can probably also use a strip of this which is white duct tape and I'm planning to use duct tape also to protect the leading edge. Probably one long strip to protect it. I may also add tape once I join the wing halves.
after seeing how flimsy that styrofoam hinge was, compressed hinge was, I now highly recommend you to at least install a tape like this Blenderm or even a strip of duct tape, at least on the bottom side. You can also do it on the top side after bending it. It should be okay at this level, just one side is fine. And also, uh, in order to take the burrs, I use a very fine sandpaper. The prep of the wing halves has been completed. As you can see, I have tape hinge on the bottom of each aileron. So this extra reinforcement, as well as I reinforced the leading edge of the wing halves with duct tape. And once I'm finished and put all the decals, I may do the same for the wing tips because the, usually the wing tips is the first place that gets scrapped up by hitting the ground. So next is Installing the servo horns, the servos, and then put the short wing spar and then combine the two wings together. Unfortunately, here we have the first major quality issue that halt the assembly. Do you see these short pieces of wire? These are the control rods for the ailerons. And look, I put the servo in place. I put in the control rod and here is where it needs to reach. And it's not reaching, definitely not. I even tried to angle this control arm a little bit towards the front still no luck so yeah if somebody uh, is just building this for the first time and have this issue yeah they have to go to the hardware store to get wire fortunately <laughs> I have a paper clip that's long enough and stiff enough and also I had this wing piece over there on one aileron I'm going to attach this and on the other one I'm going to build a new control rod. Uh, it is disappointing though. we have a second quality issue. So do you see, this is the natural way the wings are going to stand if I put the, that spar in. Do you see that they are angled? The reason is these slots in each wing have not been cut in the same, same angle. So what I have to do is either 
make them larger or trim them a little bit so the wing aligns like that or during the gluing step I have to hold it like that until the glue cures so that they stay like that also one wing uh, sits all forward and the other one a little backward here and the opposite on the back so uh, not very good especially not for beginners So it's almost done, the wing has been finished and I put a lot of duct tape around uh, in order to reinforce it as you can see all around the leading edge and the wing tips and also around the area where the rubber bands come in because this plastic strip is not thick enough and it's not wide enough to protect this foam. This is a polystyrene, very brittle. Any pressure will eat into it and then make dimples or destroy it. So I put a lot of reinforcement here. It should be fine now. And I just had to reverse the ailerons. It, they were uh, not moving the right direction, but now everything is working well. Let me get out of this menu. So right aileron, left aileron, elevator up, elevator down, right rudder, left rudder motor everything seems to be working so i'm going to put the finishing touches which will be putting back on the cowling put on the propeller and then all the decals and then i'm going to tuck in everything immobilize the receiver inside in a safe place and then the last step will be putting a latch on the battery compartment and installing this strap for the battery to hold the battery in place
It is not going to win any beauty contest, but here it is. Our MD Hobby E0717 is ready for its maiden flight. I think I completed everything. The controls are working as they are supposed to. And I completed uh, putting on the decals, the berry hatch. I will show you what I did as the latch mechanism. And is it two thumbs up so far? No. Is it one thumb up? Yeah, maybe if you consider its price. As of today, April 9th, 2021, Banggood is selling the kit version of this one on flash sale right now for $35.45. So you can easily get the four servos, a 30 amp ESC, a small motor and the propeller for less than $20. So it is even less than $60 to bring it up to plug and play configuration. So if you consider that you are cash strapped and you are good with your hands, this is definitely a good option. We have to wait for the maiden fly to give a final verdict. but. So far, although it's not great, there are some issues as I mentioned in the video, it is a good contender, especially considering the price. The three main issues were the first one, these control rods going to the elevator and rudder, they don't have the tubing, plastic tubing, to keep them from bending, so they bend. The second issue, the control rods for the ailerons were too short, so I had to find other wire to make control rods for them. And the third issue, the wing cast did not exactly come together easily. They were all off, like one was in front, one was on the back. The angles of the cutouts for the wing spar was not the same. So I had to force them to join straight, so it was a little difficult. There were also other minor issues, such as the motor cowling. It is finicky plastic, it's too small, it is difficult to push in. And then I had to make the hole that the motor wires go through and, and I enlarge it because it was too small. And now that hole is enlarged, hopefully we'll get enough airflow inside so the ESC doesn't heat up. If it does, I have to cut around make a cut out, but I'm guessing that is going to be enough. And then there are you know quality issues in terms of the material and workmanship. But overall it wasn't too bad. So not unsurmountable issues. And it's ready to fly on its maiden flight. Let me briefly show you what I did for installing the battery and also the battery hatch. So here is what it looks like. So I, the original instructions showed that I was supposed to put two little screws, one on this side, one on top of the hatch, and then just use a piece of short rubber band to close the hatch. But instead I found this uh, longer screw and I got it through one of these uh, servo arms, long servo arms, and now I can rotate and it opens. So this is a much better solution and much simpler. So that works well. And then when you open it, you will see the battery is about here. This is a 2200 milliamp hour 3S battery. And I used the, the strap that came with this kit and it is nice and tucked in. When I checked last time, it was a little nose too nose heavy. So I'm going to push it all back like this and then test it again. So you can see how it's balanced right now in this configuration. So the instructions say that the CG or center of gravity should be just where the, that pink spar is. I'm going to put my hand, fingers over there. And right now it is perfectly balanced, perfectly balanced. So it should be okay with this CG flying tomorrow. And I'm looking forward to it. Uh, spend a lot of hours, probably three nights to get this going. Anyway, I hope this video was useful to you, especially if you are planning to buy this or you already ordered it. And uh, it is a little long, I know, but I try to include all the details. 
If you find it useful, please give us a thumbs up. And if you are not a subscribe, please subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments, any questions, please leave them below in the comment section. And I hope to see you on the next video, which is going to be the maiden flight of MD Hobby E0717. Stay safe and healthy. Take care. Bye-bye.